Hey, welcome back. Welcome back to this edition of the Pest Geek Podcast. I am your host, Frank Hernandez. We're discussing all things pest, and today we're going to be discussing why you should be doing YouTube videos and having a YouTube channel as a pest control professional. In this day and age, the media wins, and there's more people doing searches for things like pest control and lawn care and how to solve a lot of these problems and information on YouTube than there are on Google. And the reason why is this is a visual business and people are not going to read a 3000 word blog to try to either find a company or solve a problem. They want to communicate in the way that they like. And here is the problem. There are people who read, there are people who listen, there are people who watch videos, and there are people who need to have a physical connection with somebody. And depending on who your customer is, is going to depend on what media you need to be on to relate to that customer. So I want to give you a scenario, and I want to talk to you a little bit about my history doing this. And this is why I'm recommending it to you to get started because this is purely based on local SEO. It has nothing to do with national competition. And if you learn to do it locally, you have another way of people finding you besides Google My Business, besides SEO, besides the blog, besides social media. It is one tool in the integrated pest management marketing program that you need. And we have built our entire business on this method. And I'm going to share something with you. If I would have come to the traditional um, group, uh, there's probably 75 pest control groups now on Facebook, and there's probably five that are really popular. And I would have come to you five years ago, and I would have said, listen, I'm getting ready to launch my pest control business. What should I do to reach my customers to get more business. You would have given me the traditional answers, Facebook ads, maybe if you were really progressive, uh, you know, relationships, get referrals, um, you know, knock on doors, uh, talk to all your friends. If I would have asked you and I would have said, listen, I'm going to do these three things. I'm going to do a web page. I'm going to SEO. I'm going to do a blog. And I'm going to do YouTube videos. And that's how I'm going to get my entire business. 99.9% .9 of you would have said, you're nuts. You're never going to make it. You're going to fail. Nobody watches videos. Nobody's doing that. It can't be done. Well, guess what? That's exactly what I did. And I launched with, well, I used to have a pest control business, landscape business, pool business, and handyman service. And we got rid of all those businesses and stayed with pest control and only with the clients that we had, which were very little at the time in pest control. And I decided we're going to launch and we're going to go online. We're going to do a blog, SEO, and I'm going to do videos. And this is how I'm going to get my business. And still people that I told I was going to do this told me it can't be done. Here's the difference between a person that understands where the market is heading, has a vision does the market analysis and does his work, does his research in the real marketplace of where the data is coming from, not from opinion polls. Because the problem with opinion polls is they're not based on experience. They're based on what you're afraid to do, you don't know how to do, you don't want to do, don't like to do, have a distaste for. And the problem is you can't run an effective business on that. You have to be able to do it based on data, based on understanding where the market is and where you need to be in the future in the next five to 10 years, because that's where most of your clients are. We saw a trend six years, seven years ago, where we were getting less and less referrals. And why? Because people were relying on online reviews, what they saw, what they read, they did their own research. They no longer needed to ask their friends and neighbors, hey, do you know a pest control business? You know a good pest control company? Why? Because a lot of pest control, there's a stigma between being dirty, having a problem, nobody wants to come to your house. 
So if people can go online and be discreet, that's what they're doing. So I went ahead and launched and I probably wrote about, um, I was writing initially for the first year, I was writing one blog post a day on problems that my customers were looking for based on SEO research. And I was writing a blog a day, but I was also producing about one video anywhere between five, three to five videos a week. I mean, a week, yeah. And I was doing this at scale, doing videos, all kinds of niche things. Remember, I have a niche service. Oh, and if I would have told you, here's, here's, the, here's the clincher. Hey, listen, we're going to go into the eco-friendly IPM natural realm. That would have really put a nail in my coffin. Well, here's the facts. For the last five years, we've grown 25% per year. And we've had not a single year we have not grown. We just started route number two right before this COVID deal. And it was already being filled up three days a week. I don't pay for advertising. I sell everything on the phone, which everybody tells me can't be done. We have a callback rate that is less than 1% right now. And everybody says that I talk to in groups, this can't be done. No, it can't be done because you haven't done it. It can't be done because you don't understand it. It can't be done because you're afraid of doing it. But the reality is that only 1% or less of people that are listening to this video right now is going to listen to me, understand it, get it, and actually do it. And the 99% will still say it can't be done. And when that guy starts to grow, people will say, well, he must be doing something illegal. He's doing something wrong. He is no longer giving customer service because you can't do that. And I'm telling you as a pest control professional, as a marketer, and a guy who's done it for the last five years and understood it, that yes, it can't be done, but you have to devote yourself. You have to have a mind shift of this. And I'm going to give you the top 12 excuses of why you're not doing it, why people are not doing it. And here it is. If the 1% that believes it embraces does it, when the 99% won't, you will have success because you have no competition. That is the secret to finding a niche where there's no competition. Because I'm in a market, listen to me now, I'm in a market with perfect competition. Oh, nobody's perfect. I didn't say they were perfect. I said I have perfect competition. Perfect competition is when the market is so saturated with pest control people. There are close, I think we're hitting close between two counties, Dade and Broward, which is almost a little bit over, I think about 2.8 million, 3 million people almost. There's 400 pest control companies. I have with around me alone, I have one dozen pest control companies within one to five, no, actually within one and a half miles of me. There's about five pest control companies, all competing for the same client. And what, what happens is the 99% says you can't. What I do is I find what the 99% says I can't do, and then I go for that 1%. And that's what's called a niche. And not only do I have a niche, but I have a market in a niche that nobody wants to work in, which is organic lawn and ornamental pest control. You see, those are the secrets. So if you have a niche market, if you're a visionary, the difference between visionaries and people that don't have a vision to grow their business, they just want to survive and they want to stay there where they're at and they just want a little bit more business every year to make up for the one they're losing, this isn't for you. This is not for you, for you because this is about companies that want to grow and businesses that want to grow like mine. I want to go from two to three to four to five to 10 routes. And that's my goal. So I'm going to do what you're not willing to do. I'm going to get criticized. I'm going to get chastised. But here's the reality, guys. I don't care. As a marketer and as a business person, I don't care what the industry thinks of me. I care what my customers think of me and the service that I provide to them. My end goal is to satisfy a customer, not satisfy an industry, not satisfy the solo operator who decides he wants to be a critic of everything that he disapproves of. 
That is what I find when I'm in most groups. And this is why my audience listens to me because my audience are people that want to constantly grow. They don't want to stay where they're at. They're not done with the business. They're not done with the industry. They're not fat, tired, and ready to retire. They want to grow. So, so you don't do market surveys. Visionaries create a business. Listen, create a business and create a business model and allow, listen to me, and allows the market to criticize and correct the deficiency in the business plan. And this is a problem that most people have where they can't take criticism. So they want to get it 99.9% .9 perfect before they launch. They're never going to launch. They're never going to get it done because they are worried. They're more worried about what everybody else thinks than the success they actually can have with what they're doing. I'm going to give you the top 12 excuses that people have for not doing uh, a YouTube video. Here's the number one reason. Nobody watches videos. You know why? Because I don't watch videos. I don't do videos online. I don't watch them. Here's, the, here's a news flash for you. Business has nothing to do with what you like or prefer. Business has to do with what your customers and your potential customers and your prospects like or prefer. You need to reduce yourself down to their level or actually be where they're at. And here's where every customer is at right now. They're on this phone. And if you're not on this phone and you're not using this device to communicate with your clients and you're only, re only wanting to talk to people in person, you're losing out over 50% of your potential that you could reach because you don't want to text, you don't want a video, you don't want to Zoom, you want to be in their home giving them a face-to-face, -face, shaking their hand when probably 50% of your potential clients don't want that. It has nothing to do with what you want. It has to do with what they want. You need to have a strong offer and then you need to have discounts and you need to have all this stuff, and, and I'm not going to do that. That is the biggest load of malarkey that I've ever heard. Because I, if you look at my over 100 videos that I have on my YouTube channel, there is not a single mention of an offer. As a matter of fact, the only offer you really need, the only strong offer you need is, hey, look, if this video has been helpful to you, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up, like it, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. That's really the, the strong call to action that you need to have on every video. At the end, my intro to every video is, hi, I'm Frank the Pest Geek, and today we're going to be discussing. And that's it. And then I, I go into what I'm going to be showing them, and I actually show them. It's so freaking easy. You take a phone, you take a selfie of yourself, you turn that sucker around, and you videotape, and you start narrating what it is that they're seeing. It's so freaking easy. It's unbelievable how easy this is. It's mind-numbing how easy it is today to do this. When I started doing video production, cameras used to cost me $10,000 a piece. Not to mention lighting and microphones. A three-camera setup for audio and video that I used to have to do was $35,000 with a mixer, with a video mixer. Today, I can do all that from my phone and a piece of software that cost me 59 bucks a month. And people are saying, oh, it's so complicated. It can't be done. It's the easiest thing in the world. You don't need a strong call to action. That's number three. I'm not going to give away all my secrets so somebody else can do it for free. Here's a news flash. If you don't give away all your secrets, somebody else is going to. 80% of clients do their own pest control. They've been doing it wrong forever. If you're the guy in the town that can help people do some of the things that they need to do for themselves, like sealing, like caulking, like exclusion, like repairs, vent repairs, door repairs, correcting water problems, there's a million things you can talk about and never actually show anybody how you do anything and then they can solve 80% of those pest problems by fixing that. If you're a company that wants to be the guy that somebody needs to call every month because you basically live off of spray and pray, nobody can help you. But now if you're an IPM company, if you're an integrated pest management company, 
that shows people how to prevent problems and then you're there to solve it for them and man maintain that low level of pests because the customer is really picky because they're very uh, you know, high end customers, they, they are in a $1 million home, you know, they have zero tolerance for pest. That's a different matter, but you can be by local SEO, local SEO on your videos. You can be the local expert in your market and everybody will go to you. So even if you do give all the secrets away, here's another news flash. Only 20% of people that ever buy pest control will hire a pest control professional. It's only 20% of the homeowners. 80% of people will do it. It's the 80-20 rule. It's the Pareto principle in effect. That's been true for over 50 years. Nothing has changed. So what you need to do is get over that stigma and say, I'm not going to help anybody. You want to be stingy, somebody in your market's going to do it and eat your lunch. And then you can whine and complain about how they're eating your lunch and how they're, you know, oh, well, you know, he's giving away all the secrets and he's lowballing and he's this. And you can just whine and whine and whine and complain and never do anything about it. So what is my competition going to think? You all, you live in this little bubble of this camaraderie of independent guys and individuals. And if you want to, it, it becomes almost like the stigma in, 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 and we have this problem in Latino neighborhoods and, and in Latino families. And, and it happens in black families and it happens pretty much in a lot of minorities. All of a sudden, if you get an education and you learn good English, you sold out. You sold out to La Familia, man. So if you all of a sudden you decide you want to be the guy that wants to grow and wants to have 10 routes and be a large company, well, you're no longer going to offer quality service because if people buy, people buy is me. Well, if people are buying you, then you should be on YouTube promoting you. It's that simple. See, you can't have it both ways. So, so what, are, what, are, what is my competition going to think? Here's the reality. I can give a rip what my competition thinks because my competition doesn't have my goals and dreams and I don't live by theirs. So if my competition doesn't want to talk to me after I grow because they're haters, because they don't like it, because they can't take it, they can't handle it, that says more about them than it says about me. Because I can treat my employees right. I treat my customers right. I do right by everybody. I should be able to grow more than you. It's that simple. I make no apologies for my growth. I make no apologies for my success. I make no apologies because I've done what everybody told me since 2013, uh, 2009, that couldn't be done. You can't do organic. Organic stinks. It doesn't work. It's crap. You can't be online. You can't do it with SEO. Everything I've done is based on what everybody told me I couldn't do. The reason I did it is because everybody was saying you couldn't do it. See, I'm like, the, I'm like that salmon that goes against the current all the time. So now you've got, um, you know, what is my competition going to think? And then the, the number one, uh, number six, which is I don't have money for expensive equipment. Everybody's got a cell phone. You have no excuses. As a matter of fact, hold on. I'm going to show you. I'm going to step away from this camera for a minute and I'm going to show you what you need. Okay, I'm back. All right, so here is an apparatus that is very, very expensive. It's called a tripod, okay? This tripod is 20 bucks. You can pick it up anywhere. I've got this little thing right here to hold my phone in place that goes down and basically, and I clamp my phone in place like this. Hold on, I gotta bring it down. And it holds my phone in place. And then I've got a microphone up here that I plug in and this whole thing under a hundred bucks plus the phone. And I've got a microphone. I don't have anybody. I don't have anybody to help me edit my videos. I don't have anybody. You can edit videos on the phone and upload them to YouTube from right there. There's a free app that does it. You don't need expensive equipment for under a hundred bucks. You've got a studio right here. Microphone, which is really good. This is the Rode uh, mic. It comes with a little shock mount. This little thing right here, I think I paid, I think I paid 18 bucks for this thing to hold my phone. 
which is a quick release one for a wide phone. And the tripod has been with me, uh, I think 20 years. I paid 20 bucks for it at, at Kmart. Um, that's it. That's all you really need uh, to, to produce a video. So I need expensive equipment. Um, I'm not good on camera. Duh. Who cares? Nobody's good on camera until they're good on camera. There are guys out, out there uglier than sin doing videos. And they're making it. So you have excusitis. All right? I'm too old for that. You got to be kidding me. Dude, I'm 50 years old. I'm super excited about this. I feel like a freaking giddy teenager on his first date. Well, if you're not, if you're too old for that, then get your, you know, your son and your grandchildren to help you with that. They will, they would love to do that. Um, I don't talk very well. You talk better than you think and nobody cares. So get over this thing that I'm not good with words. You have to talk to people all the time. Once you get in front of that camera and you practice it 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 and you do it over and over again, it gets very, very easy. I don't have the time. Well, make the time because your competition is going to make the time. Somebody's going to make the time. Decide to watch less football. Decide to go out less. Decide to go hang out with your buddies less. Decide you can invest one hour a day into this. You're going to need about a good hour a day to record a five-minute video, edit it, post it, get it on YouTube, one hour a day. You can't invest one hour a day. You can't do it. It's that simple. If you say you can, you can. And if you say you can't, you can't. Either way, you're right. Um, I'm not tech savvy. Your children and grandchildren are. That's no excuse. Get somebody to help you. I don't know how to edit videos. There's an app. There's a million phone editing apps that you can edit the video right there on the app. There is Adobe Premiere, which is what we use. We spend on the Adobe Suite. I think it's, I think I, I got it when it was 29 bucks a month for the online version of Adobe Suite, which I got Adobe Premiere, Adobe Audition, Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and uh, Spark. And I think it's got a dozen more programs that I don't even use. Uh, those are the ones we use the most for editing pictures and video and audio and everything. And you know what? Invest a couple of hours on YouTube videos, watching free videos, because that's how it is. It, you can get all the free videos to learn how to edit, cut. All you need to do is splice, cut, put two bumpers together, and maybe edit the audio a little bit. Once you get your audio right and you learn to get your audio right, and if the audio isn't perfect, nobody cares. Here's the other thing is, well, it's just the quality, man. You got to have this high quality. That is the biggest bunch of baloney I've ever heard in my life. I got videos where I didn't put an ear muff. I didn't put a wind muff over my microphone intentionally. And I recorded it at 10, 15 mile an hour winds. And I still did the video. And that video got 14,000 views. And that video gets me business all the time. Here's the stats on my business. 25% increase year after year, 50% of all my business, because I do lawn and ornamental and I do so many pictures and videos and illustrations about ID and bugs on plants and how, what that bug is and how that bug gets on that plant. And I do so many of those videos that 50% of my business from lawn and ornamental comes from videos. The other 50% comes from my blogs and my SEO. Actually 50% of my LNO comes from video and blog because it's a combination. And then my SEO and my pages that I do are for the general pest control, my GHP, my residential pest control, plus my Google, my business, uh, which gets me the local business in the area. Very little on social media. Actually, more of the social media is focused on doing this podcast than it is actually from my, from my business. My social media in my area doesn't get me a lot of business. I don't focus on Facebook for that. I'm focused on other things for Facebook. That's how we get it. That's how we get the business. But I invested three years of just steady work producing content at scale. Here's the thing. Oh, but you're going to be more focused on quality than on quantity. Uh, no, you focus more on quantity than you focus on quality because the quality is subjective. This is not a Grammy-nominated podcast. 
okay? The quality of this audio, it's usually better than most people would think, but it's on a $50 mic with a $59 mixer. I just have 25 years of experience doing audio and I understand when I can care and when I don't have to care. But when you're doing a one to three minute video and there's birds chirping and cars are driving by, I've done it near an avenue where cars are whizzing by and beeping and all that and nobody cares because it's, it's what the words that you use, the quality of the content that you're delivering. What is the value of the content you're delivering that's going to determine whether it's quality or not? It could be in low light. It could be in no light. It, it could be a black video. It could be the audio is terrible. Stop making excuses. You're making excuses because you're more worried about what everybody's going to think because you want to be this perfectionist that really doesn't exist because you're not a perfectionist. You're not perfect. You're imperfect no matter how hard you try. And you have this such big ideal of what you think it should be when the reality is something else. There's a guy called um, Jason Akers from Akers Pest Control in Lynchburg, Virginia, who is crushing it online. He's in a lot of the groups. A lot of you have made fun of his videos. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you right now, I totally disagree with Jason Akers on just about everything he says. But you know what? It doesn't matter to Jason Akers. And it doesn't matter to anybody but his clients. And the reason I disagree with him is because he understands as a marketer, he gets it. He gets his local clientele. He gets who his customer is. He knows it in a gut right here. He knows it. And he sells and markets to that market. And I understand what my niche market is. I understand who my client I'm going after for. And I understand, and we're total opposites. He is a traditional pest control guy, and I am a green IPM guy. And he will say my stuff doesn't work. And I'll say his stuff is older than dirt. As a matter of fact, most of the, most, most of the protocols he probably has, Moses wrote them on a tablet. And it doesn't matter. And I give him props because he's crushing it. He's doing it. Even though I don't disagree and I don't agree with him. As a matter of fact, I would love to have him on the podcast and debate him. And you would see why. And at the end of the day, it's not going to matter. At the end of the day, he's going to continue to be who he is. And he's doing it online. And he's doing, he does videos in his car. He does videos in his truck. He's done videos and is sitting in his bed doing videos. And he's crushing it. And a lot of you will criticize that and say, well, that's, I would never do that. You would never, but he is. That's what you need to do, guys. Look, I know right now the phone is not ringing for a lot of you. It stopped ringing for me. It got really, but guess what? My Google, let me tell you this. My Google, my business online stats have gone in the toilet. 66% less than what we were getting. Here's the interesting part. My blog is through the roof because my blog is writing for people. Listen to this. My blog is writing for people that are looking for a specific solution. I've got this black sooty thing on my poda carpets and I don't know what that is. And they're Googling black uh, mold or black disease on poda carpets and my blog pops up and my blog tells them exactly what that problem is and how to solve it. And most of the time, they're going to say, oh, my God, this is so complicated. The product you recommend costs $300, mijito. I'm not going to buy this. I said, yeah, we'll solve that problem for you. You see? That's how you do it. You, you give a solution when the customer figures out that you really need to be a professional at this to handle this and do it, then they will call you. And that's where I end up. So right now, my blog is going through the roof because people are home bored to death and they're solving problems in their home that they haven't dealt with for the last two years because they've been busy working. And now they're looking to do that home remodel, you know, fix those plants, do the landscaping, deal with this ficus problem they haven't dealt with. 
So my videos are going up, yet my Google My Business and my, because people are searching online in Google My Business for pest control, pest control Miami. That's the keyword everybody's fighting for. That thing is $26 a click to do AdWords in Miami right now. If you're going to do AdWords, every time somebody clicks and it takes usually 10 clicks to get one conversion. So the conversion right now, while the most of the company, the country is probably at $100, if you don't know what you're doing on Google AdWords and you don't have a good manager, that's easy, a $225 conversion. Plus add to that the trip and the sales charge and the sales commission, and it costs you 300 bucks, 350 bucks to acquire that client. While I'm selling it on the phone with free advertising that I invested in for three years and I'm not traveling anywhere and I'm closing all my business. And if I can't close it on the phone, it can't be closed because it's, it's an issue of price that I'm not going to drop it to half or three quarters of my price to compete with their, what they're wanting. So it's understanding that. So the phone isn't ringing guys. And maybe, maybe, maybe now is the time that you invest in getting a vanity number, you know, like a, a 1-800 got bugs number or a 305, you know, 555, 5,000, where it's easy to remember. Listen, Ring Boost right now has an offer for you. That offer is 15% off. And that's huge because if you're really, if you're a company that's growing and you want to get that phone number, that phone number might be a little expensive. But guess what? They're giving you 15% off right now. If you go to ringboost.com slash pest and put in pest15, which is our code, um, you need that discount code. For that and we also want to get paid so you know go ahead and please if you're going to use it help us out use our code you save money and i get a commission and go ahead ringboost.com look they're america's they're one of america's largest provider of vanity numbers 1-800 toll-free numbers so give them a call check them out talk to my buddy over there andrew and they're going to save you some money and you're going to have the number you want so what do you need to do? Well, here's what I'm doing for the industry right now. I told you guys, if you've listened to my podcast from day one and you listen that I told you I'm going to do some stuff for the industry that nobody's doing because guess what? There is no association that's going to care for you. Associations are in the business, listen, of either training or if you're, if you're a CPCO, they're more focused on training. But if you're a National Press Management Association, you're focused on, hey, Congress getting laws that don't get passed, lobbying. You know, that's what they do. That's their main job. There's nobody that's looking out for the little guy. I've told you this. I've told you. The one to five person company, there's not a whole lot out there that you can do. So what we're doing is we want to do something really cool. We want to have this brotherhood of solidarity and showing the world that the independent pest control guy can band together. And this has been the problem in the past. Everybody is so individualistic. Nobody wants to join any association because no association is ever going to be good enough for them. I get it. The reason I became an independent and the reason I am an operator today is because I didn't like working for anybody. I was a terrible employee and I've always wanted to own a business. So a couple of guys, you know who, who took advantage of this? And I'm telling you, 99% of you guys out there listening to me are not going to take advantage of this. You're not going to do it. I'm only banking on the 1%. I know that. The first, I put out on Facebook and I put out a post on this, that I'm doing this. Within 30 minutes, I had a company from Rochester, New York, send me a video. They're one of the large ones. See, they understand the value of this. And the marketers get it. The guys who know about marketing get this. And you're saying it doesn't work. And he, within 30 minutes, he sent me out. I think I was online at 11 o'clock at night. And at 12 o'clock, I had a video in my hands. I uploaded the video, put it up there for free, and gave him a backlink. And it was a COVID-19 video. So what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and... Do in front of your truck. I already had one yesterday from uh, Luke out in uh, Naples, Florida. He sent me one. He gets it. He's a marketer. In front of your truck saying, hey, listen, guys, 
Here's, here's how simple this is. Listen, we are a local pest control business and we understand COVID-19 is a problem right now for servicing you. We want you to know that we're essential. We're an essential business by the Department of Agriculture and the federal government has declared us an essential business. And we are here and we're ready to serve you. If you give us a call at 305 dot, 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 or visit us on our website below at pestgeekpodcast.com, we'll be ready to serve you. Done. Video done. So that's really all you have to do. You don't need your wife to be a videographer. You don't need just, hey, tripod, phone. You can even use a pair of headbuds, wireless headbuds. Hook it up to USB and you've got a microphone out of your headbud. They, they work really great. Send me the finished video, okay? You send me the finished video. You're going to email it to media at pestgeekpodcast.com. You're going to send it through an app that you go online to wetransfer.com. One word, wetransfer.com. You're going to put in the email which is media at Pest Geek Podcast. And what that does is it compresses the video and sends it to me so that it'll go because these videos, short videos, six minute, you know, 60 second video could be 30 meg. Um, it's not going to go through email. Um, don't post it on your YouTube channel and send me a link. I need the actual video. Uh, either an MP4, an MOV, it does not matter which format. We can convert it and, and YouTube can take it. You're going to do, you know, this could be a 30 second video. This could be a 60 second video. It could be 15 seconds. It could be whatever length you want. You just want to communicate the fact that we're sticking together, that we're doing this, that we're an essential business and that we're going to promote it. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to SEO that video for free for you. Send me also in the notes your complete contact. So if you've got a Facebook page, send me that link. If you've got your website, phone number, uh, email, whatever information you want to be marketed. If you got a Twitter channel, you got a Twitter handle, if you've got a Facebook, all of that, send it to me in the note. When you transfer it, I will get that. I'm going to SEO the video for local. I'm going to geotag it for local. So it's going to be SEO for local, geotagged for local. You're going to be able to show up in your market. So when somebody is looking for a pest control and they're putting in whatever, you might even show up on Google, or it all depends. Uh, we're going to SEO that, give you a backlink back to your website off of that video because that's important. That's a social signal. So you're going to get that. And, um, you know, I know that. Why aren't you worried you're going to get blasted with like a million videos? No, because I know what people do. I know that 99% of you listening to me aren't going to do it. Only the guy that has a vision is going to do it. So I might get one video a day and invest five minutes in you. And you know what? Here's the deal, guys. If that video within the next year for 60 seconds and five minutes of my work produces for you one or two leads, just one or two leads, wasn't it worth it? Does one or two leads make that car payment? Does one or two leads pay the electric bill? A little bit extra helps for a five-minute investment. And you getting over your hangups. I mean, that's what it comes down to. So remember, media at pestgeekpodcast.com. Send it to WeTransfer uh, uh, through WeTransfer.com. And stop getting the freaking excuses, guys. Just do it. Hey, this is Frank the Pest Geek wishing you a pestacular day. <laughs>